Hello everyone, this is Vinayat Kumar Rai and you are welcome on my YouTube channel Capsule. This is the trailing video of my previous video on a gastrointestinal absorption. In this video, I will tell you about the mechanisms of drug absorption. It is divided in two parts and this is the first part of this topic. As far as mechanisms of drug absorption is concerned, it is of three types, transcellular transport or intercellular transport. Second one is paracellular or intercellular transport. And third one is vesicular transport. I will start with the transcellular or intracellular transport. It is the most common pathway for drug transport and the passage of drug across the GI epithelium it is uh, the simple process by which the drug uh, passes just uh, through the cell. And the three steps involved in the transcellular transport of drug are permeation of drug uh, from the GI epithelia or lipidal barrier, movement across the intracellular space, and permeation of the lateral or basolateral membrane. Uh, all these three parts are involved in the transcellular transport and various transcellular transport process involved in drug absorption are passive transport process passive means the process that doesn't require any energy it uh, depends on the concentration gradient uh, of the drug therefore the passive transport process can be further classified into following types Passive diffusion, pore transport, iron pore transport, facilitated or mediated diffusion. Now the second transcellular transport is active, active transport, where uh, active means the process which involves the energy. This transport process requires energy from ATP and these are of two types. The first one is the primary active transport and the second one is secondary active transport. Secondary active transport is further divided into two parts, symport that is known as core transport and antiport that is known as counter transport. The next transport mechanism is vesicular or corpocellular transport that is also known as endocytosis. These are also energy dependent processes and it involves transport of substances within vesicles into a cell. Vesicle is the main component of this transport mechanism and this vesicular transport of drugs can be classed into two categories that is pinocytosis and phagocytosis. Pinocytosis is known as drinking of cell and phagocytosis is known as eating of cell. Just like uh, you can see in this figure, all the three mechanisms are shown. First one is the transcellular, second one is the paracellular, and third one is the vesicular. Vesicular transport, you can see the cell uh, is being engulfed by the vesicle and further it is going uh, to the other side and uh, this is the comparison of transcellular, paracellular and vesicular transport mechanisms. Now the third transport mechanism is paracellular or intercellular transport. It means the drug transport from uh, between the cells and uh, this transport uh, through the junctions between the GI epithelial cell and it is of minor importance in drug absorption. The two paracellular transport mechanisms involved in drug absorption are permeation through tight junctions or of epithelial cell. This transport is occurred uh, through opening which are little bigger than the aqueous pores. Insulin and cardiac glycosides are taken up by this mechanism. Second one is persorption. 
it is the permeation of drug through opening between two epithelial cell and this paracellular transport differs from pore transport i'll let you know about the pore transport in my coming slides the paracellular transport involves transfer of drug through the cellular junctions and pore transport involves the transfer of drug through pores present in the cell membrane so uh, both are the different things cell membranes means uh, the transport of drug through cell membrane means the drug is going inside the cell and the paracellular mechanism involves the drug going between the cells and uh, it will cross the epithelium easily and uh, the drug will not go inside the cell but it will go through or between the cells now i will start discussing all the transport mechanisms one by one in detail the first one is passive diffusion it is the first mechanism um, of transcellular uh, transport and in the passive diffusion as we all know that uh, it is energy independent process and it is called non ionic diffusion also it is a major process for absorption of more than 90% of the drugs the driving force in this case is the concentration or electrochemical gradient it is defined as the difference in the drug concentration on either side of the membrane so that the drug will go inside uh, the membrane easily now the drug movement is a result of kinetic energy of the molecules here the drug at the absorption site partition and then gets dissolved in the biological membrane or lipid membrane and finally the drug leaves it by dissolving again in aqueous media and this is how the passive absorption takes place now uh, the passive diffusion is best expressed by fick's first law of diffusion that says if the drug molecule diffuses from a region of high concentration to one of lower concentration until equilibrium is attained if the equilibrium is attained then drug will not move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration that is the fixed first law of diffusion the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the concentration gradient across the membrane if the concentration gradient is uh, higher on the upper side then drug will move to the other side otherwise it will not move so the rate is dependent on the concentration gradient this is the equation for fick's law of diffusion and you can see here that uh, dq by dt that is the rate of drug diffusion here d is the diffusion coefficient of drug to the membrane that is represented by area per unit time a is surface area of the absorbing membrane of the drug for drug diffusion k m by w is partition coefficient of drug between the lipoidal membrane and the aqueous gi fluid c git minus c is the difference between the concentration of drug in the gi fluid and the plasma so that is the actual concentration gradient axis and h is the thickness of the membrane now the equation we have seen in the previous slide can be generalized and we if we generalize this equation then uh, the drug move down the concentration gradient that will be considered as a downhill transport the process is energy independent and non saturable the another requirement is the environment should be in the same condition so as to maintain the proper movement of the drug from the higher concentration to the lower concentration and uh, that is why it is energy independent process and it is based on the concentration gradient the rate of absorption is proportional to the concentration gradient between gi fluid and blood as we can see uh, 
in the previous equation. Now, the greater the area and lesser the membrane thickness, then more will be the diffusion of the drug. The diffusion rate will be faster. So, as we have seen in the previous equation, uh, that H, that means the thickness of the membrane, is inversely proportional to the rate of the drug diffusion. So, the thickness would be less and the surface area should be more. Intestine source rapid rate of absorption than from the stomach because of uh, the greater surface area. The process is rapid over short distance and slower over the long distances. Equilibrium is attained when the concentration on each side of the membrane will be equal. So, uh, there should be a sink condition maintained. Otherwise, the drug will not move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. That is the main requirement. Now, some drug exist in both ionized and unionized form achieve equilibrium by transferring unionized species. The unionized form will go uh, from the one side to the another side and if it is available on the other side, then it will dissociate into the ions. Now, the rate of transfer of unionized species is much, much higher. It is considered up to three to four folds than the ionized form of the drug. So, drugs should be in the non-ionized form before the absorption into the systemic circulation. Now, if we see uh, the other points of generalization of that particular equation, then greater the membrane or water partition coefficient of the drug, the absorption process will be faster. A lipophilic drug diffuses at a faster rate by solubilizing in the lipid membrane than the uh, hydrophilic molecules. The drug diffuses rapidly when the volume of GI fluid is low because because of uh, low volume of the GI fluid, the concentration of the that particular uh, drug will be higher and the concentration gradient will be higher so that the drug absorption uh, rate will be faster. The dilution of GI fluid decreases the drug concentration in these fluid. Upon diluting, the drug concentration will uh, go lower and the process or rate of absorption will be slower. This phenomenon is, however, made use of treating case of overdose of poisoning. So this is the better concept. Whenever you have taken any poison, uh, anyhow, so it is quite good process if we dilute that particular poison by taking so much of water inside your stomach and uh, it will decrease the concentration of the drug for the absorption into the systemic circulation and drug will not go into your blood and it will stay uh, in your stomach and the process is independent to a later you know, lesser extent on the square root of the molecular size of the drug if the molecular size is uh, high then the rate of absorption will be slow if the drug having molecular weight between 100 to 400 Dalton are effectively absorbed passively. If the molecular weight is higher than 400 Dalton, then passive diffusion is less likely. The diffusion generally decreases with increase in the molecular weight of the compound. Obviously, it is inversely proportional to the molecular weight of the drug. Now, in this slide, we will see the situation of the stomach when, uh, whenever we administer any dosage form inside our stomach. Initially, just after the drug administration, the CGIT, that means the concentration of the drug inside the gastrointestinal tract will be much, much higher than the concentration of the drug inside the blood. So that la large concentration gradient will exist and it will act as a driving force of, for the absorption. 
at equilibrium the drug diffusion should stop obviously the drug concentration on both both the side will be equal then drug absorption the rate will be slower and uh, it will stop finally upon attain uh, after attaining the equilibrium uh, situation a large fraction of drug may remain unabsorbed if this situation exists but once the passively absorbed drug enter the blood it will readily distribute it into much larger volume of the body fluid it means along with the absorption process the distribution process is also exist so that the drug moves from the systemic circulation to the extra vascular tissue or organs and that is why the sink condition is maintained the concentration of the drug at the absorption site will be much much higher at all the time so it is called sink condition for drug absorption so under usual gastrointestinal tract condition the diffusion coefficient that is d surface area partition coefficient that is uh, k m by w and uh, h that is the thickness of the biological membrane is constant always so the term t a k m by w upon h whatever we have seen in the equation of fixed first law diffusion and uh, that particular section of that uh, particular equation will be replaced by a constant p and the p can be uh, designated as permeability coefficient so permeability refers to the ease with which a drug can penetrate or diffuse through a membrane sink condition the concentration of drug in plasma c is very small in comparison to cgit that is why the absorption process exists as a result equation 1 uh, may be simplified to you can see here uh, in this case the dak m by w upon h can be replaced with p that is constant permeability coefficient and the equation will be changed into dq by dt equal to p cgit here the c is very small then you can leave this value because it is negligible because of maintaining the sink condition and the equation 1 will be converted into equation 2 like this now the equation 2 is an expression for a first order process as like uh, in equation 2 and it is a passive diffusion that follows it is a passive diffusion that follows first order kinetic as a large concentration gradient always exists at the absorption site now the rate of drug absorption is usually more rapid than the rate of elimination the equation 2 says and uh, the dilution and distribution of the absorbed drug into a large pool of body fluid and its subsequent binding to various tissues are the other reason for eliminating drug being slower than the absorption and that is why equation 1 was converted into equation 2 here we can see uh, the the relative passive diffusion rate of different types of molecules the lipophilic molecules absorb rapidly uh, through the biological membrane and small uncharged polar molecule either absorb through the biological membrane or uh, will not absorb and the large uncharged polar molecules will uh, sometimes absorb in smaller quantity but uh, maximum of the drug will not be absorbed and the ions if any ionic drug is there then it will not get absorbed through the biological membrane and uh, this is the relative passive diffusion process of different types of molecules after the passive diffusion the another transcellular transport is uh, pore transport and uh, 
it is called as convective transport bulk flow or filtration as i have already told you that it occurs through a protein channel present in the cell membranes the drug moves from the outer side into the cell and finally it be, it will go out from the cell to the other side so this is how this process occur and the characteristic of pore transport are the driving force in this case is hydrostatic pressure or osmotic differences across the membrane and uh, a water flux exists that promotes such transport is called as solvent track the process is important in the absorption of low molecular weight drugs that is less than 100 dalton because of uh, smaller pore size of the protein channels low molecular size smaller than uh, the pore diameter as i have already told you generally water soluble drugs through narrow or aqueous filled channels of pores can cross and examples of some drugs are urea water and sugar that can cross the, these pores easily and this transport is seen while renal excretion of the drug removal from the cerebrospinal fluid and entry into the liver all these mechanisms all these processes are based on this pore transport mechanism and the chain and linear compounds of molecular weight up to 400 dalton can be absorbed by filtration now another transcellular transport is ion pair transport here it explains the absorption of drug like quaternary ammonium salt and sulfonic acid majorly ionic drugs despite low oil to water partition coefficient such agent penetrate the membrane by forming reversible neutral complexes with the endogenous ions and uh, such complexes have both the required lipophilicity as well as aqueous solubility for passive diffusion Propanolol is the best example of this case, a basic drug that forms an uh, ion pair with the oleic acid and it absorbed by this mechanism. Here we can see the eject mechanism. It is uh, the cationic drug which is uh, combining with the endogenous anion and after combining this neutral pair of complex goes to the other side by passive diffusion and finally it uh, dissociates into uh, the cationic form of the drug and uh, the endogenous compound so this is how this transport occurs. the next one is carrier mediated transport it is also the part of the transcellular transport and this carrier mediated transport uh, is uh, basically uh, leads the transport of the polar trucks and it is more rapid than the concentration gradient and partition coefficient values it facilitates the transport of many essential water soluble nutrients like amino acids vitamins polysaccharides and so on it involves the carrier molecules in the previous mechanism we have seen uh, the anionic or cationic endogenous molecule but in this case the carrier molecules are there that carries uh, the drug molecule to the other side the carrier uh, returns to the, uh, its original site to complete the cycle by accepting a press molecule of solute it binds reversibly or non covalently with a solute molecule to be transported and the carrier solutes complex tra traverse across the membrane to the other side and that is the exact mechanism here the carrier dissociates and discharges the solute molecule to the other side carriers in membrane are proteins and maybe enzymes sometime such several carriers are dissolved in the lipid bilayer membrane easily and uh, that's that is how this transport occur now uh, the important characteristics of carrier mediated transport are these are 
the uncharged surfaces that allows it to get solubilized within the lipid membrane easily. No directionality. They work with the same efficiency in both the direction. The efficiency uh, they carries uh, with the first direction. The same efficiency will be shown uh, in the other direction also. Structure specificity is there. And for a drug of specific chemical structure can be carried easily. And uh, the, the examples are several nutrients that can be carried by this mechanism. Drugs having structure similarity to the essential nutrients can be absorbed easily by this mechanism. The number of carriers is limited. That is why the competitive uh, inhibitions can be there. Competitive binding between agents having similar structure will be there and uh, the saturation will also be there. The system is capacity limited. That is why at the higher concentration of the drug, the system becomes saturated. And this mechanism is good for false nutrients like 5-fluorouracil uh, and 5 bromouracil These uh, structures are quite similar with the nutrients and uh, that is why it is called, these are called as uh, false nutrients. Passive diffusion, here the rate of absorption increases linearly with the concentration. Carrier mediated transport process, that is absorption increases linearly with the concentration until carriers are saturated. High dose of the drug shows linearity or constant value after the saturation of carriers. If carriers are saturated, then uh, the drug diffusion will not occur. It is a capacity limited process and uh, adequately described by mixed order kinetics. It is also called a mechanic mental or saturation or nonlinear kinetics. It is, a, it is first order at the subsaturation level and zero order at the at and above saturation level. It means Firstly, it will show the first order kinetic uh, or diffusion and then it will show the zero order kinetics. The availability decreases with increasing dose of the drug like uh, B1, uh, vitamin B2 and B12. Administration of a large single oral dose of such vitamin is irrational. Never use the last volume or dose of these vitamins because uh, the carriers that are responsible for the absorption of such vitamins will be saturated. In such case, the vitamins will be uh, uh, eliminated from the body as such and uh, you will not be able to use uh, the benefits of such vitamins if you are using in large num uh, quantity. So that is why the administration of large single oral dose of such vitamins is irrational. Carriers mediated absorption generally occur from the site which are uh, rich in number of uh, carriers. It is called as absorption window. Uh, the area or uh, the length where the carriers are uh, uh, rich, then uh, that particular area is called as absorption window. And drugs absorbed through such windows are poor candidate for control release formulation. Now, if we see the plot between rate of drug absorption versus concentration of drug at the absorption site, we will find that the, in the case of passive diffusion, where concentration gradient exists, then it will follow uh, the first order kinetics throughout uh, the absorption process. But in the case of carrier mediated transport, there is limitation of uh, the saturation of the carriers present over there. So the first part of that particular graph, it is uh, from here to here, will show the first order kinetic and then it will show the zero order kinetics. So that is why it is called uh, the mixed order kinetics. It is the comparison of rate of absorption versus rate of concentration plot for passive and carrier mediated transport. Now the next uh, transport mechanism that is facilitated diffusion where uh, a carrier mediated transport can be seen. 
it is a downhill transport and the rate is faster than the simple passive diffusion because of the presence of the carriers and the driving force here is concentration gradient of the drug it is a kind of passive process and no energy expenditure is involved here and the process is not inhibited by metabolic poisons as in the case of passive diffusion also so a uh, facilitated diffusion is of limited importance in the absorption of the drugs uh, the examples of this uh, diffusion is the entry of glucose into rbc's and intestinal absorption of vitamin b b1 b2 and b12 and uh, here we can see the intrinsic factors forms a uh, complex with a vitamin b12 and transported across the intestinal membrane by a carrier system and you can see here in this figure also the first part Uh, here the upper part is gastrointestinal lumen and the lower part is blood it means that when a drug goes from here to blood that is known as absorption and in this case we can see one uh, to transport vitamin b12 there is an uh, intrinsic factor and there is a carrier also all these three uh, segment will be bind together and form a complex here you can see the vitamin b intrinsic factor and carrier complex and it will go to the other side like this and finally all these uh, this complex will be dissociated into vitamin b12 intrinsic factor and carrier and finally this carrier again go to the other side and it will carry the another molecule to the other side so this is all about this topic uh, that is part 1 and uh, uh, my next video is the mechanism of drug absorption part 2 please keep watching us thanks for watching